Uh, I believe there's 14 people in the lobby, and I maybe we only need 12. I'm not certain. Uh, or are there draft coaches? I believe these may actually be coaches, so that would make more sense. But yeah, we are about to get into the pro draft here soon, once the teams are ready. Go ahead and check up with them. Okay, it looks like they are ready. We're just holding on one second, so... How are you all today? Uh, excited to be here. Uh, excited to cast for you all. We will have a happy cloud coming in in just a bit. He's about to get home and he'll be casting with me. But until then, you're stuck with me for just a little bit doing a solo cast. But I'm super excited for that. And uh, looks like we're still trying to get pro draft link. <laughs> this is um, a little scuffed and I love it. I love it in all of its scuffedness. So uh, let me just go ahead and whip open the chat here, see what y'all are up to. So how are y'all doing? Everyone having a good night? It's Thursday. Almost, we're getting closer and closer to that lovely weekend. Super excited for that. Okay, it looks like we may... Uh, nope, still not into things just yet. Huh. Gotta love it. Got to love it. Wait, are what in tarnation? Uh, Okay, so we are now into pink van. It will be Glacial Inferno Academy on the blue side and Karate Squad on the red side. So coming in with the first van, we have the Caitlyn, which has just seen a massive rise in priority from everything to your silver solo queue games all the way up to highest level of League of Legends and competitive. Overall, just a really oppressive champ. Looks like the Echo is going to be banned out by Karate Squad. Really good mid-jungle flex there. And then the Ash is also going to hit the ban bench for the side of Glacial Inferno Academy. So they're banning out a lot of these long-range utility AD carries already. So it looks like it's going to be a triple AD carry focus on a lot of the meta for the side of Glacial Inferno Academy. Going to take the Ezreal out, get the two long-range champions out of the way that are mainly prominent in the meta right now with the Caitlyn and the Ash. So... Already, the AD carries are getting their pool pinched very hard as well with the Aphelios ban coming out from Karate Squad. And it will be the Morgana ban. And the Instalock Yasuo first pick, the Bronze Special, the Ol El Classico, the Samurai Warrior himself, Yasuo, going to come in here. And it will be an instant counter pick Renekton. Not certain exactly which lane that's going to go to but it could probably flex around with the Yasuo's positioning. And it looks like they will next prioritize the Thresh in that support position to give them a little bit of CC, some engage and disengage. Really just overall a solid blind pick, is it looks like the Yasuo and Akali are going to remain a flex here if Glacial Inferno decides to lock in this Akali here, going to give them a lot of mobility and a nice mixed damage type in those solo lanes, and they will lock it in. And then the Jin was locked in as well. So banning out a lot of champions, I feel like Jin is very good into, like the Caitlyn, like the Ash. Maybe worried, maybe that's a champion style that the AD carry for Karate Squad likes to play a lot of. But overall, I would like, if you plan to go with a champion like Jin, I wouldn't hate leaving some of those picks up. Maybe baiting the opponent into picking them and then using the Jin as a counter pick to those type champions. But we'll see what Karate Squadron locks in here. And they're going to lock Tristana. So very strong AD carry for all-ins. Could all-in the Jin in a lot of situations. Going to look to follow up with the Thresh. As we're now getting into the second round of bans. Uh, picks are not exactly even from both sides. As one team has locked 
a top laner AD carry support. The other one's locked in top AD carry in mid. And it will be the Lee Sin hitting the band bench here. Not going to be able to give over that extra mobility for the jungle position to over to Glacial Academy. And it will be Nocturne coming in as well. Going to go ahead and get rid of that. That can be a hard thing for champions like Yasuo, like Akali, to deal with that point-and-click fear CC that he does have. It can be very obnoxious because it counters things well, like Shroud, like Windwall. And it will be Jarvan taken away as well, and Fiddlesticks. So quadruple jungle bans, which surprises me considering there were certain roles that had already been picked that were not matched. So it's, it's an interesting choice, but it looks like they're worried about specific jungle matchups. As it will be Fiora locked in here, Fiora and Renekton can flex mid and top. Fiora is going to give them a nice split pushing option, duels well into the Akali and Yasuo. So overall, the side of Karate Squad has got a nice dueling comp here, looking to just go head to head with the Yasuo, with the Akali, and try to fight it head on. Ooh, gonna grab the Blitz Crank here. Huge, huge lane priority with this champion. You have the ability to roam, could really help out and set up for that Yasuo in the mid lane. Really, or in or the top lane, most likely the mid lane, and Hecarim's going to be the final champ here. So, I like the side. I like what they did on the side of Glacial. I like being able to pick up those two engaged champions at the end of the draft to be able to solidify the composition. Make sure that you do have options in case you need to engage in a tight corridor or something like that. You can now have the Blitz Crank. You have the Hecarim available, and is that a happy cloud? Is it? Yeah, it is. Here I am. What's up? Hey, so we are currently just finishing up draft as Maokai is going to be the last lock-in. Looks like it will be a Maokai jungle here for Karate Squad. Is it? And um, yeah. Are you guys in the actual draft or in the um, yeah, pro draft? We're, we are in the pro draft currently. Look out them. Yeah, so... Um, I will need like an invite from someone. I believe you're going to have to spectate or one of the coaches will have to leave to be able to get you an invite to the game because currently there's 14 people in the lobby, including myself, the streamer, and the two coaches for each team. Uh, yeah, if you could just spectate like normally, that may work better. I'm not certain. Uh, Who are the... Uh, okay. I'm not certain. That's what Lachance brought up to me. Sorry, guys. Uh, just a little bit of uh, technical issues here. Wasn't necessarily ready for the coaches to be in-game the whole time. I find that a little odd, but, you know, I'm new to things. Okay, so we are going to be currently in a spectator delay, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you about the draft a little bit. So for the side of Glacial, they have... Yastuo, Akali, Jin, Blitzcrank, and Hecarim. And then for the side of Karate Squad, they have Renekton, Maokai, Fiora, Tristana, and Thresh. So, really aggressive dueling comps coming out of both teams. I return to my training. Is Fiora mid lane? Uh, I believe Renekton and Fiora are probably going to flex. They're probably going to put the Fiora into the Akali, I guess, and then the Renekton into wherever the Yasuo goes. This would be my best guess. Well, okay. I have yeah. to wait for the stream to catch up so I can see the actual drafts themselves, because at the moment, I can't. Yeah. I didn't catch everything you said, so if you give me a sec, I will uh, comment on it then. Yeah, for sure. Until then, I'm just yeah, I'm trying to make some conversation while we get to oh, this for second, sure. the second pick face. So how's your day, man? How have you been? It's been hectic, my friend. I just got off work, rushed mm -hmm. home. I was asked to be on the cast of the Battle of Titans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is, a, it is a pretty big matchup here. Excited to see it. Both comps are looking really hype. It looks like it. So it looks like it's going to be Yasuo for the top laner and Akali for the mid laner. If I'm not mistaken, but they could just flex lanes to try to 
um, you know, maybe match up better into that specific composition. So it's yeah, also a top in the Fiora. Who dares defy my yes. We're connected mid into Akali with the Hecarim yeah. jungle. Yeah, sorry. We are we're trying to get things ironed out right now due to the way the spectation the spectator is currently working. Oh goodness. Wait, what? Oh goodness, this is currently a lovely show. Okay, so we have a... So, looks like the Yasuo is going mid versus... So, I, I think both of these matchups are pretty crap for Yasuo. Um, yeah. I have very little faith in him being able to win. I think, I think it's like one of those matchups that the skill discrepancy has to be very high for the Yasuo to win. Yeah, like I at the agree. highest levels of play, like the Yasuo can start to maybe win, but um, because this is our lower tier league, maybe and maybe the Yasuo is insane. You know, he totally could be, but I think the barrier for the margin for error for Yasuo is a lot lower than like Renekton. Renekton, especially after those changes a while back, where his W instantly breaks breaks the shield, he can basically yeah. go in when he has max fury. And one way to really the only way to ever beat Renekton in lane, quote-unquote, is to try to deny him from getting a full Fury bar, so he can't, like, one-combo you. But Yasuo obviously can't do that very well. Yeah. His mobility I, doesn't really matter either. Um, yeah. I do think it's smart putting him in the in the short lane, because he would just get eaten alive in the long lane. Uh, I would say that, that it would be a lot more effective for the Glacial Comp? Glacial Inferno, right? To yeah, yeah. Not have a tank or to have a tank. I guess Hecarim can kind of itemize armor, but like the one advantage they would have is they could itemize armor in the comp of uh, Sensei Randall's would be like pretty low damage. Fiora yeah. obviously does the tree damage, but Fiora is like a pretty crap team fighter, right? So we don't really care if uh, you know we shouldn't really care if um, she. You know, in team fights, you don't care. You're still itemizing armor, yeah. right? So yeah, she's not. She's not going to be the. Actually, she may be focused down more in team fights, but she's really going to be in that situation. She's going to be looking to split the map, maybe go into the side lane here. Yeah. And so I will say the Yasuo was blind picked, and I think the Hecarim and Blitzcrank came in a lot as a need for some engage, like really trying to fit that with the with the champ pools that these players have, trying to fit that in at the last couple picks, get the Hecarim, get the Blitzcrank for some ability to be able to really lock down these team fights. And if, if things go down to 30 minutes and they're getting zoned off objectives, they have some way to be able to to be able to catch them out. So uh, bot lane matchup, we're looking at Jin Blitzcrank versus Tristana Thresh. Uh, who do you favor in that lane? Um... I mean, I think Tristana should be favored. I like Tristana in the lower tier leagues, too. I think she's, like, pretty pub stompy champ. Um, yeah. Also, I think her W, the rocket jump, can be buffered pretty easily. So, like, if you have, like, any reaction time at all, like, you don't, you could be, like, 60 years old. As long as you can, like, see it hit you, you can press W, and you should be able to, like, never get hooked. And Thresh doesn't really care if he gets hooked. Um, I think their all-in potential is a little bit better than Jin Blitzcrank. I don't believe Tristana buffers Blitzhook, if I'm not mistaken. No, you totally can. You totally can. can? Hmm. Yeah. You can buffer oh, any okay. CC, actually, on Tristana W. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'm just bad, then. <laughs> so, I, yeah. um, and it's, it's like about as forgivable as uh, Ezreal. Ezreal E. 
Yeah. yeah, so you can totally buffer it. It's not like super difficult. I would say it's 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 you know Ezreal E is like the most egregious where you can like you can E like while you're being hooked basically, like while you're getting yeah. pulled into him. Tristani you have to do it like before it hits or like right when it hits. But it is a mm -hmm. so. Um, but anyway, yeah, I I personally agree. I think Tristana is a good pick here. I think that Tristana jumping on the gym as well can possibly be a big kill threat. I'm interested to see where Maokai focuses his ganks this game. Uh, quick interesting thing from loading screen here. We have Yasuo running Ignite in the mid lane into the Renekton. The Renekton choosing to run Teleport instead. So it is actually the Ignite advantage on Yasuo. So a little more possibility for a solo kill or a, a possible dive with Hecarim. That's one of the main things I'm going to want to be looking at here. Is this Hecarim? How is he able to punish these pretty aggressive champions on the side of uh, Sensei Randall's Karate Squadron, whatever their name is. Yeah, Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron is a yeah. um, a staple. They've actually moved down. So they, they this is the ex Executive League champs. Uh, wow. In name, only two of the players, I believe, are returning. So Notorious Bud and Old No Name who were, I think, the creators of the team. But because they lost a lot of their higher tier players, decided to uh, go, go down ahead. a league. And I would say, I, th I do think both of them were kind of playing up above their weight level. So it was good for them. Um, yeah. But yeah, I... So I think I've said this on a previous cast. I am not a huge fan of, like, the... Mechanical outplay comps in economy, like I think that is not the way to win. I think the easiest comp will always win if you just well, hold like, on a pick... second. Jim could be walked up here on the bush. We have Thresh walking in, gonna go for the flash hook, and he's not gonna flash, and that's gonna be a very easy first kill. As the three flashes committed for this though may not necessarily be worth it, but it will be first blood going to the Tristana as three summoners blown on the side of Team Karate Squadron. So yeah, I, I, I personally agree. I feel like a lot of times there's no need to play unnecessarily hard champions in a in a lower in a lower levels, like below plat. But it is it is definitely it is fun to see them try things like this. It's cool to see them go for it. And maybe this is what they feel comfortable on. It's what they've been raised on playing it, like it, and, it, and if it's a comfort pick, that's the kind of thing you do whip out in these competitive games. But I, I very much agree with the point that in the end, you should try to look for something you feel like you're not going to run into those mechanical roadblocks with. I would, I will show you, or I will use the champions. Not only did they win the, the regular season, but they won the whole league and they moved up to executive. Clown9 will be my example. Clown9 almost every game shows like team fight comps like very like straightforward like classically a mumu galio things like that like we're gonna press yes. our r buttons and win the game yeah. and they crushed most teams because it doesn't matter if you're like unless you're like smurfing on people with yasuo or akali it's not worth it right like it's not um yeah yeah it, it's just hard to like pull it off because we look at the Oh, Fiora going for a quick trade here. Not too much to be had there, actually, as Akali's going to be able to walk it out with the fleet footwork. But, yeah, I, I see what, I see what you're talking about. It is, it is a little bit of a debate, like, whether you go for comfort or whether you go for easier champions. And I think that's something that if you do take the time outside of these scrimmage, or these uh, league games to practice, or in scrimmages to practice those types of champions, that's, that's the time you should be committing to playing easier champions instead of like, one, one that I see a lot is stuff like Katarina. I see a lot of Akali and Yasuo, and it feels like easier to execute mid laners would work better, as we seem to have a 2v2 on the top side. Hecarim going to pop the ghost and go onto the Fiora here. She has no W available, but it looks like she's going to be taken down here. Akali going to pick that one up and even up the kill score, and that's going to be huge for her in that laning phase to get that early priority on the Fiora as the Renekton just tears through the health bar of the Yasuo. Very little counterplay to be had there. 
And and so far, what you've said is right. The Akali looking good in the top side, but Fiora and Akali, I would say, are roughly about as hard as each other. Would you agree? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the, we are talking about like an easiness, an ease of execution comp, but I, I will say, since the Randall's comp is not like, although like I think lane matchup wise, it's pretty good. Although I think Akali can lane into Fiora quite well. Um, I would say that, like, for the most Ooh, part... Hook under the Thresh here, you may get stunned up here, but no, instead it's going to be the counter engage. The Tristana bomb down onto the Jin. She's going to jump back in and going to go ahead and grab that kill as the Thresh hook lands onto the Blitz Crank. And this is maybe Tristana's third kill of the game. Going to jump back on, and that's a true double kill for the Tristana. She's going to be sitting at 3-0 and at 4 minutes, and this is a nightmare for the side of Glacial Inferno. Three kills already on the enemy AD carry. And if you want to talk about ease of execution, well, auto attacking is pretty easy to execute a lot yeah. of times. And 3 0 is going to make it even easier. So I'm talking about Tristana, just so good at the all ins. And, you know, when you're, I think both hook supports are so trigger happy, they just want to go in. Tristana is good at not only like going in off of a hook, but she's good at like the counter engage. Like, not many AD carries are going to survive Tristana jumping on their head even after. So, unless Blitz can hook her which we've already discussed is kind of difficult. Yeah. She's just really good, I think. Especially, I, I think she's pretty good in general. I think Triss is kind of slept on. I think she has some weaknesses, but overall, I don't think she's terrible. She does synergize with some of the supports that are like pretty popular right now. Yeah, I agree. But, and, in, uh, but in the league, thing, yeah. Yeah, one thing I'd also like to point out, I, I think Tristan is getting a lot of credit here. This Thresh sitting at 0 0 3 did get the flash hook at level one to get this first blood. As Tristana is going to jump back on the Jin real quick, she dodges out on the root. He's forced to blow the heal, but he's slowed up by the rocket jump, and she's on a rampage. This lane is absolutely done. Four and zero on the Tristana, already sitting on a BF sword, just absolutely massive. And I was about to say that it's just as much Thresh's part as it is Tristana's getting her those kills, but she just goes in and solo kills as I say that, so... <laughs> yeah, Th Thresh has been hitting all of his hooks so far this game, and it looks really good for the side of Karate Squadron here. Yeah, not, not taking away anything from uh, the bot lane in general. Just talking about the picks. But yeah, I think that Karate Squadron, um, in the executive lead, they had a totally different team, but they were also fairly bot-focused. So they might carry that playstyle over because Old No Name and Notorious Bud were used to playing that way. Yeah, I agree, but... And they're going to be able to pick up this first Mountain Dragon here with no contest. And that's what that bot pressure does get you, is these cru this crucial Drake pressure in-game, which will be huge for them. Second Dragon is going to be Ocean Drake, so it means we'll either have the Infernal Soul or the Cloud Soul this game. And, yeah, and one thing you bring up is that they were Executive League players, and they have played against really good macro, like, better macro-level teams. And a lot of that does carry over into games like this. I feel like that kind of experience and practice can really help a team coming back down at this level and being able to win games like this. As Blitz is going to hook in that minion for his AD carry. Go ahead and deliver that caster minion. But yeah, what do you think about that? Do you think Executive League experience coming back down into economy is going to really give them a boost here? Um, It just depends. I think Executive League has... One of the things that I would say is I thought Executive League had, like, the top end of that league was pretty strong in terms of, like, players. Um, obviously, like, the biggest difference with, I think, CEO and Executive is, like, drafting and some of the strategies a little more sound. But the yeah. player, the player talent was good. Like, they had, I mean, famously Chibi Dragon, who was, like, the most yeah. 1v... He was, like, MVP of the league, in my opinion. He was just, like, 1v9ing every game. Um, physical, I think he still plays. Well, it looks like a possible dive here coming down on the bot lane. One moment is the Jin's gonna flash, but he's still gonna get attacked by the Maokai root. As the Tristel comes down, unstoppable for her, gonna dodge out on that Hecker and CC as a TP comes in for the Akali. She's coming in though, gonna get that extra damage, and she's gonna grab the 700 shutdown onto the Triss, flash blown, and the Thresh is gonna go down as well. That's a double kill for the Akali, and if you want a way to answer onto this Tristan and the Akali now sitting at 3 0 post buffs, could have something to say about that as a beautiful turn with the TP from the side of Glacial Inferno looking to stay in this game. Ooh. So that's pretty huge. Akali got like a massive shutdown 
Um, yeah. It's going to be big here for her coming back to this lane. Fiora is going to be able to feel it once she is able to back for that Gunblade. Unfortunately, right now she has no TP, so she's stuck making sure that Fiora doesn't shove all the CS under tower. As Fiora has been able to equalize the levels just a little bit. As the Renekton's going to jump onto the Yasuo, tear through that health bar once again. But all things considered, Yasuo with this Ninja Tabby's build is keeping up very well. And come 20 to 25 minutes will be almost infinitely more effective than this Renekton at most points other than a straight 1v1. Yeah, I think Tabby's are very valuable this game. Like, it's, it's honestly something I could see, like, the entirety of the enemy team picking up. Besides... Yeah. Naokai, there's very low CC, like, it's single target, but that's, you know, whatever. Oh, uh, Triss um, jumping in on Jin again here with the bomb. She's gonna get rooted up, take a little bit of damage, but she's gonna be able to get out. And yeah, I think I think that, I, I personally agree with you, I think it, I think that Tabby's is pretty much a universal pickup here into the three auto attackers. Merc Treads is nice for Maokai CC, but overall, I mean, would you rather be able to have a little bit reduced CC here, or a lot with reduced damage from the three main damage profiles on the side of Team Glacial Inferno. As the Renekton's gonna go in here and get big damage down as the Maokai's able to shut down the Akali before she has any time to ult. And the Hecarim surely gonna fall soon as the ultimate hits on the Renekton and you know, Yasuo's gonna go in here, Maokai picks up the Rift Herald and Yasuo's able to take out the Renekton and hit the Triumph. He may be able to take out Maokai here as well, but the Maokai's gonna pick it up with the Emolent proc. And it looks like there's fighting in the bot lane as well, as the Trissana is going to get hooked under tower, and that's going to go over to the Blitz Crank, unfortunately. But that's still a great fight going pretty much even for both sides. Two for two, Rift Herald going to the side of Karate Squadron. Yeah, I think Akali like should have just gone in on the Maokai there. I was very surprised she didn't. Like, she should just commit it. Well, she's gonna was... pick it up here. She gets the free shutdown there. So, unfortunate that she did give over that shutdown in that team fight, but able to pick it right back up right there. Yeah, for sure. Um, another mistake that we kind of see in, like, um, the Economy League, and this is something that I always harp on these people for, on, on, the, on these boys, is spend your gold, man. The Akali was sitting on so much gold. Um, after like getting all those kills in the bot lane, she just ran straight back to top. Because you can yeah. have fights like that, right? When you have like a, a Herald fight or something. Oh, or a dragon trying fight. to go in too quickly can be fatal here as the Fiora is going to pick up a quick double kill on both of them as she perfectly outplays that, being able to get get away from that. Akali does pick up the Hexet Gunblade, but Fiora is going to take full plates tower up in the top side and that means there's going to be about a 2.5k gold lead for the side of... Uh, Karate Squadron, so well played by her. She's really just got herself back in this lane now with about a 30 CS lead first tower. She's ahead now, to be honest, by quite a bit. Despite oh yeah, the she the probably... Someone is going to get hooked under tower. Ignite goes down, but she's going to be able to jump it out. Still quite a bit of health left. The Ignite's not going to kill her just yet, as Jin. the Blitz can look to follow up here onto this Thresh. Nope, not having the hook. And it looks like not much is going to come out of that play as the Jin just doesn't have the damage to be able to cut through that health bar yet because of this item gap. Yeah, Jin also just not, um, unfortunately, missing the root there. It was a good hook. Um, sometimes it's hard to see the angle of skill shots. Like, yeah. I know me, I have like a thing, stigmatism with my eyes, so sometimes like parallels can look weird. So he probably thought he was on, on the money. Um, but yeah. If our, I don't know if our wonderful, handsome streamer can hear me, but if you think if you press X, you toggle the gold, and we can see just how much gold Bud has. It looks like a counter gank planer. here on the mid lane as the Yasuo is going to go in on the Renekton. It's going to be 4v2 right now. That's going to be a kill, but the Tristan is just going to jump straight on the Jin, who is the sacrificial lamb here going down. But the roam on the mid lane is able to get a kill. Thank it should you, be sir. able to get some Drake pressure. So how are we looking at the gold stats? So it's actually fairly even across the board. I would say the bigger lead is Tristana over Jin. So Bud actually only has oh, yeah. about a 600 gold lead, while the yeah. Tristana has about a 2k gold lead. Yeah, that's which is due crazy, to the, right? The, the four Akali kills really do help uh, 
take that lead down, but the two level lead is nothing to be scoffed at here from the Fiora. Now already sitting on Ravenous and interestingly enough, Berserker Greaves. Interesting build coming out there. Never seen that one before. The Notorious Bud special, yeah. dude. Yeah, the Berserker Greaves top lane. Building whatever item he deems worthy to be in his inventory. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's a good look. He is getting a lot done in that split push with that attack speed taking these turrets. And overall, just the turret taking potential of the 1-3-1 one, one from this team is massive. I really, I think this comp is easy to execute, like, lane-wise, but when it comes to the game, it's a pretty tough ask a lot of times to ask economy level teams to do a 1-3-1 one, one split pushing comp to focus on turret taking, but they're executing it very well, in my opinion, having already taken two top towers, getting quite a bit of damage on the mid and bot as well. Renekton is scaling up, and once he gets that Blade of the Ruin King, should have a little more agency in the 1v1 itself, but the Yasuo has gotten quite a bit of help to make sure he gets out of this lane. Scott free, and it looks like Fiora and Akali gonna converge on each other up here in the top side. Fiora gonna go in, Akali's gonna get the Gunblade, lands the E, goes in with the E auto ults again, and the Fiora's gonna look to heal up here to deny that execute as the Fiora's low on mana. They're still fighting, the Akali's looking to drag it out, but Fiora just does too much lifesteal, too much damage right now. It's Notorious Bud on a killing spree on the Fiora, 3-1-2, and two, looking really good, winning that fight even with the no mana. It's gonna be a hard ask for them to win this game at this point as a 4k gold lead comes through for Karate Squadron. Yeah, I think in a situation like this, where you see the Fiora rushing the lifesteal, it is worth to get the Executioner's Calling on Akali. Yeah. Because um, Morello is just too expensive. And uh, we could see that, like, he was oh, pretty much winning that. Put the dive onto the Fiora here, and he's going to be a shutdown, but the Blitzcrank ignites for the kill and takes a 450 shutdown away from the team. That's a little... A little... Uh, a little unlucky. That. A little unlucky is the best word we're going to use for that. But uh, yeah, I, I think that I think that the Executioners on Kali is a decent idea, but now that Akali's E now does full magic damage, I think it is a little worse than before. You just still, auto, you just auto him, right? Like you're oh going to yeah, Q you. auto, so you just want to proc it. Like you always win the 1v1 if you can get the lifesteal down with the Shroud. I don't think you should ever lose that. But because Bud has so much life still, like now finishing the Cutlass, right? He's just like sustaining so much. He stacks the Conquer. You need to cut that, cut that off because otherwise, like unless you can full combo him, um, fighting him outside of a minion wave, it's gonna be very difficult to win. Yeah, and once that, it looked really good for the Akali at first, but that was because the Fiora committed that ult later in the fight was able to take it, use it later, heal up about 400 extra HP, which denied the execute. Away from the Akali, as it looks like Red Team is going to rotate the Tristana and Thresh towards mid, and they're going to go for this Rift Herald here to try to break open the map a little bit more. I like this play here. I'm not usually a big fan of second Rift Herald, but I think here getting the mid turret down on the split pushing comp would really help them snowball things. And they are able to take it without any any real interference as Akali is pushed very deep in in the top lane having to farm these waves, but the gold lead hasn't really grown within the last five minutes very heavily. And Drake is going to be coming up soon. So gonna have to look and see if there's any type of fight there that possibly could be won by the side of Glacial Inferno. Until then, it looks like we're in a bit of a lull state as the Fiora's already got taken so many turrets here up in the top side. They're looking to pressure onto the inhibitor now. As the mid lane turret is not long for this earth, sitting at about, let's see, about a good old uh, 187 HP. Gonna go down on this next minion wave, and that will be pivotal for their side being able to pick up the dragon and the rift herald's gonna take the inhibitor bot side most likely but no that's gonna be denied away as the fiora gets taken down by the hector the root comes down onto the maokai yasuo down committed for the maokai and the yasuo is gonna pick up that kill so two kills given over here but the turrets are dropping all across the map 
Renekton's gonna get hooked in now, as he dashes away from the Lantern, gonna have to pop the ult here. Yasuo's gonna look to knock him up, double knock up for Yasuo. Gonna be able to huge win this fight, the Blitzcrank flashes in, Hecarim knocks Tristana out of the W, and the Root comes down on the Thresh. This is gonna be an Ace and a Drake, possibly even more for the side of Glacial Inferno, coming back in this game off of those double overextensions. Gonna look to take this mid tower, gonna look to take the dragon. Really huge fight from them to bring this game back to an even state. Yeah, just unfortunately overstaying. They do have the ability to get picks with the Blitzcrank. Um, Hecarim, Yasuo, Jin, right? They have like pretty wait, good ways to set him up. And they're not super tanky yet. Um, Maokai's getting there, oh, but the like... Fiora going in very hard here. Not going to be able to life steal that up as the Akali takes that kill as the Yasuo is able to get out. But the Maokai solo kills Hecarim off of the dragon. Crucially enough, it is still picked up by the blue team if they are able to somehow extend to this game, get the Cloud Dragon for or the Cloud Soul for the Hecarim. That could be a huge damage buff for him. As the Thresh Hook goes very wide, granted no vision was to be found. And it looks like we're returning back to a more normal state here. Uh, 15 to 12, down to a 2k gold lead now, and the Drake advantage for the side of Glacial Inferno, uh, with a lot of standing gold available with these turrets left on the map. So who do you favor at this point in the game? Um, I'm going to favor the side of Glacial here. Um, as someone who's casted in this league for quite some time, I just have a feeling that they're going to pull it back. Um, I think Fiora just has to, at this point, like hard commit to the split push and I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, yes. It's a little freaky, right, to try to hold it down. The one saving grace is I will say that they do have um, this Tristana, which who could easily carry the game? Like, don't get me wrong. Tristana is very strong, like a lot stronger than the Jin, working on her third item. Yeah. But I do think the Yasuo almost finishing IE and now Akali having uh, the hourglass, and I think Akali is working towards the Morello. I would hope. And once they get life steal, or like Notorious Bud loves to build these like full life steal builds, which are. Does it look like he's gonna fight a little bit? Oh, never mind. No fight really ended up happening there. Just engaged. I forgot how those two champions worked for a moment. Anyway, back to what you were saying. Yeah, Notorious Bud is like a, loves building these full life steal builds, um, which can be funny and cool in the one v one, but. They're not good if you are team fighting, right? And then they're also not very good if people build Grievous wounds. Uh, yeah. And if Akali plays the the one v one, right? I think she could just e she should be easily be able to win. Um, so I think Bud just has to commit to the split push. So it'll be up to Sensei Randall's if they can hold off. Luckily, he he did get the base turret, right? So he so does looks have like that. Looks like getting taken very low here, and she is going to get taken down. The Hecarim's going to pick that up now, sitting on the Trinity Force as well. But every time Fiora dies, something else comes back on the other side of the map. And that is now the seventh turret. As even though they have been dying, they've hardly seeded much map pressure. So they will need to be careful about these deaths. They will add up over time into advantages for the side of Glacial Inferno. But for right now, the isolated death did end up resulting in a tower. And as you said, he does like the full lifesteal. Now currently sitting on around 40% lifesteal between the Ravenous, the Bork, and I I, kind of, I honestly question the Blade of the Ruin King here. Like, you're into a Yasuo, you're into a Kali, why not build Death Stand second here? I've learned that you just don't question Notorious Bud. Just let him <laughs> do what he wants to do. You just Fair enough, honestly. logic and reason. Yeah. And he's the champion. He won last year, so, you know? Maybe yeah. he's like we're, he's the true five head. I mean, how many L L LBLCS championships have I won? Zero. So I mean, same here. I same who, here. So who I can't, to tell this man I can't how to on it. Although I will say, last <laughs> split I was harping on his builds. He was on tank duty, and then like for the finals, he built the correct items, and I was like, oh my god, he's been unlocked. And, they, and then they won. They three owed.
So yeah. Maybe I'll take <laughs> some credit for that. Maybe who's listening? Yeah. But I do think they need light. They need some. I think they should be getting executioners on Yasuo and Jin. Um, yeah, I believe it's those good will versus come Renekton. In it's good versus Fjord. It's good versus Maokai. Like these are all—they're just good items to buy. To be honest, with the way their their composition's working right now, Fiora's not getting much of a chance to life steal at all, despite the lack of Grievous Wound. She's getting popped like at really hard at the beginning of these fights. I mean, you don't you say Apollo. It's almost. As if building only life steals items isn't an effective strategy. It's I mean, I'm in, I'm in no way trying to like yeah. bring no, a player I, here. I understand that it's not the most optimal build, but what yeah, I'm saying yeah. is I can see why the Morellos hasn't yet come in for the other team's side. Yeah. But the roots are going to come down here, and it looks like they may have found a couple picks. He also is getting caught out. He does not have access to the wind wall. He's going to be shut down. The Hecarim's out here in no man's land. Right. This could just be the turning point they needed to get themselves back in strong advantage in this game. So the Jin's going to ult, but not much to be had from it as they're disengaging. And the Tristana's still got that red buff to help her back up. As the Fiora's now going to look to take the bottom inhibitor pretty much uncontested here with that attack speed. Going to tear through it. And yeah, it looks like it may just be two inhibitors here, so despite the kill lead for the side of Glacial Inferno... Oh, a nice hook onto the Thresh, gonna land, gonna get the root down, the Akali gonna walk up, dodge out on the other hook. But uh, yeah, despite the this, despite the kill lead for the side of Glacial Inferno, just getting out pressured throughout this entire game, not really having much to be able to do about it, is now Red Team's just gonna look to clump these five split pushers in mid and look to shove down this mid. Or they may just go ahead and retreat to the dragon, reset, spin to the gold, possibly look for a baron in the future. For sure. Old No Name showing his shot calling prowess in Engage. Um, he is known for that in this league, and he knows when to pull the trigger, by, uh, catching out the Yasuo. And again, playing around this Tristana, right? Tristana is so strong, and when Yasuo goes down and Hecarim comes in, they fight these like really split fights. They're able to win. Potentially a 4v5. It wasn't a, like obviously a true 4v5, but just getting the picks was, was smart. Um, and that's, yeah. yeah, that's that's definitely, a, I would say, something a strength of old known names. Uh, he's most likely the shot caller as well. Yeah. And to be honest, I, I like the Drake take here. I love the picks, but I would... Getting picks at that point, after those inhibitors, maybe reset and look at Baron here. I'd like to see that coming out from them, as they do have double Bork melees. You have a tank to tank it up. You have to block it in case of a fight. And you have a 75% crit Tristana. I say you group around this objective and then you punish them heavily with the 1-3-1 one, one split push and just close out this game here. Yeah. So Fiora is looking to go in. Akali's training back a little bit of damage, but Fiora healed it back in one auto as the question mark pings come down from Glacial Inferno. And until they realize they need to build this Executioner's Calling, this Fiora really can just tank as much damage as she wants, as long as it's not fatal. And she'll get it right back. But working towards what I assume will be Death Stance. Yeah. Which is a lifesteal like item, which I, I do think you should be purchasing. I don't mind yeah, the uh, Ravenous Hydrant to the DD. It's yeah. such, a, such an insane, I'd say meta-defining item right now. So getting that will prevent him from, it will kind of help him fight. It will prevent him get, from getting like, uh, one shot, which has been kind of his only weakness. So, yeah. that'll be nice. And, old no name. Yeah, making the call to get the Baron here. Yeah, I, I personally agree with the build. I don't necessarily like the Blade of the Rune King, but if you are at this point, you might as well go ahead and double down. You're not really sitting on much in the terms of health, so why not get the best item for a low health champion to be able to stay as lying, alive as long as possible? Gets you some extra life, steel feels great in the kit. You have that 30% damage burn, which is going to make it a lot harder for these champs like the Yasuo, the Akali, the Hecarim, and Jin to be able to burst you down as quickly, even if they apply the Grievous Wounds. As Yasuo is going to look to go for the Blade of the Ruin third here. Akali going the Leandri, so it seems like all of them skipping out on Grievous Wounds here, other than the Blitzcrank. Yeah, they're just kind of trolling, I think, unfortunately. Um... Leandre's I mean, is a I, decent I, I buy it's here. Like it's not a Leandre's is not a bad buy, but like I don't know what 
I assume he's going to play the Rune King the on the Ultra. Goes and he's going to ult in here. Not able to find a decent flea there, but none of the follow-up really hits as the Blitzcrank's just going to get blasted in the front line. But it looks like the Renekton goes down as well. This may be worth for them, but the Akali has to go into the Zhonya's. The Yasuo going in here with the 100 crit. And they're going to ult onto the Tristana, but she's getting so much healing. But the Akali's going to be able to find it. She's on a rampage. They're going to be able to get the kill. This could be... The Fiora is in the base, though, as are we going to have another back door as the Jin's chasing down the Fiora? But now it's four people heading back towards this Fiora, but she's cleaning them up in the base! As she's able to take out the Jin, and she may look to extend this onto the second Nexus turret. Oh my goodness, just massive with the Baron right now. She's going to just look to push down the Nexus into four people! You gotta do something! You gotta defend your base here! You can't just go back and purchase. Okay, it looks like they will be able to possibly get away with it, but they're seeding triple inhibitors here by not chasing her out. And honestly, at this point, seeding it triple inhibitors is almost the same as seeding your entire Nexus. Like, yeah, you won the fight, that's great, but you gotta get those objectives afterwards. You gotta make I mean, sure they you just, don't... At this point, they just, they just can't answer this Fiora split push. They needed to collapse. Again, we just like... As long as Fiora just doesn't auto Blitzcrank, she won't proc that, right? So Jin did get it, actually, yes. I see. And Akali um, did as well. And Akali got it, finally, but it's like a little... Just waiting too late, right? Like, yeah. Now he has what? enough lifesteal that it shouldn't matter. There is an open Nexus now, and if anyone has seen the last Economy game series of Silver Drillers versus the Happy Canadians, you will know that backdoors can and will happen. So right now it looks like they're going to play more base defense here, not looking for that PTSD to be happening anytime soon. But yeah, I mean, I think I think it was a good hold. I think the overall collapse was really smart. And they did have double inhibitors respawning, which is pretty good timing for them. May, but the open nexus still is a big issue here. And it means that they're going to have to really keep a good eye on this Fiora. As it looks like Maokai ult's going to come down to dissuade this away from this inhibitor. Fiora's going towards the top inhibitor. And it looks like they're just going to try to get these triple inhibitors back. As Hecarim is now getting ready to charge. Not able to find anything. So it looks like Fiora and Blitzcrank are dueling a bit on the top side. We all know who's going to win that one. And it looks like they're just collapsing on the Nexus here. As the Renekton ult comes down, he's going to dash into the middle of the enemy team, but he's going to get taken out. But this Fiora is massive. Going to kill the Jin in the back line. The Akali goes down. Renekton is going to die. There's so much going on, but it looks like the Nexus is getting focused, but they're still not able to get it. And the triple kill for the Yasuo, they are holding against all odds here. And it may just be a quadra kill here for the Yasuo. No, it will be the Hecarim taking that ace, but... Crucially enough, Grievous Wounds coming in for nearly every member at this point. And this is just, like, it. can they finish the game? That is really the big question here. You have triple inhibitors, but the enemy team is good at shoving minions. We're going to have to see. We are going to have to see if the side of Karate Squad is able to even, like, end this. Because we've seen these situations before. And so what do you think about all that? That was very chaotic. So oh, I don't. I don't even know what to think, to be honest with you. Fair enough. Okay, I'll be. I'm gonna be real with you. Okay, fair enough. Well, then I will do the thinking here. Okay. I, you know, I assume they would like walk in, but this is the weakness of this comp. Like, they have two champs that are notoriously pretty crap at team fighting. Um, with Fiora and Renekton, Renekton can be good, but he has to be a, like kind of ahead of the curve, and Fiora is not. Does not have the build to team fight, so um, yeah. Now going for the bloodthirster fourth. Gotta just, complete it. Why not? Just you have to complete the Exodia life steal into yeah, the, the Exodia. Grievous wounds comp. Yeah. It so, hurts, but. but yeah, surprisingly enough, with the ten turret lead, the gold is still basically even off of these shutdowns, which is absolutely crazy in situations like this where one team still has most of their outer turrets. And the other team has only a Nexus. You're used to seeing a big gold lead, but right now, very even. So overall. the main issue, yeah, the main issue is like if Triss dies, they they just don't stand a chance, right? Because yeah, Bud can't. Just, 
Fiora can't one be can't really team fight super well. Like they're clumped together, they just focus her down, she'll just die. Um, the life steal doesn't. Life steal is like effective for sustain, and it's effective if you can like prevent yourself from being targeted right through other abilities. Yeah. And it, it's oh. good for like clutch one v ones, but the team yeah, fighting so, it makes uh, it difficult. Baron, yeah, Baron will come down here for their side though. May help them be able to shove this final push in with these double supers. I think if they just guide these double super minions and the team fighting flaws they do have will be felt a little less. Oh, for sure. Super, they, sh they need to use super the minions. minions should be able to do this. I would have loved to see them not shove that mid wave and walk these minions in at the same time to be able to uh, sink the waves up. As they're going to fight over the Nexus here, the super minions are in the base doing massive damage. Looks like the Blitzcrank's going to be taken down here, possibly, but the knockup onto the Fiora, she's getting taken low. Sriyasa is going to get the kill. Knocks up the Renekton, but the kill will come down onto the Nexus. And despite all the fights going the way of Glacial Inferno, the game will go to Karate Squadron and their split push style comp. So, yeah, the map pressure overall really did end up paying off quite a bit. And uh, they, they, they got over the line. Things looked really sketchy there for quite a while as they had lost the gold lead for a little bit, but they are able to find that nexus. They are able to win out in game one. And yeah, it was very well played by them. Way, way, to, way to pull it out. I mean, you did what you had to do. Uh, I think one thing that they need to look into here is possibly drafting a little more team fight because if they don't get these early advantages, they are going to struggle in a, in a more even game. And also Fiora's build is... It, it, it is what it is, man. It, I mean, that is, is the notorious Bud special. He, hey, you gotta love it. Someone this... in Twitch chat said it best. He doesn't play champions. He plays items. That so he... is beautiful. I That's love that. Built. I would have loved to have seen a spirit message coming out from him, but to really maximize that, but... That doesn't have not... the lifesteal stat, though, unfortunately. So he needs it. But yeah, I think also, Glacial needed to get the Grievous Wounds a lot earlier. That Yeah, I, would say I agree. I think the Grievous Wounds came in pretty late. And also, I feel like they maybe need to play a little riskier because it felt like despite them winning all of those fights, winning with a score of 26 to 18, they still lost the Nexus. They still were just constantly losing map pressure. Only the couple of times they got kills, they grabbed a couple objectives, they were able to get it, but other times it looked like they were just being split apart and they were just waiting for the other team to make a mistake and come into them, which works at a point, which it really does work when you're behind. But whenever you have to look at ending the game and really maximizing your team comp and using that new gold gap that you found to be able to pick, you have to be able to pick up those enemy turrets and get that defensive vision and some of those deep wards to be able to stave off the split push and be able to group effectively. So I maybe would like to see them uh, stray away a little bit from the AD carry bands. The AD carry did look good in early laning phase for the side of Karate Squad, but overall became quite invalidated as the game went on. So maybe let some of those more early prio AD carries through and then just maybe try to gank it more often and uh, maybe play a little bit more engage. I would say get rid of the split push. Make them fight you 5v5. Go, go your Camille, Jarvan, Galio. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's about all I have to say about that game. It looked really good. Uh, really enjoyed it. It was, it was pretty cha chaotic, and I thought, I, I thought we were going to get another backdoor. I'm like, there is no way in casting three games I'm going to cast two backdoors already. But then again, it's economy, and this yeah, is the low-budget exactly. LCS. So it's truly beautiful. I am going to add you here. Your name is a happy clap, correct? Yeah. Happy Cloud. There you go. I have added you. Let's go ahead and invite. Them. Go ahead and get you in here. Good, 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 good. So, that's good. It looks like one team is taking a bit of a break while the other one is already in here. So, what would you like to see this game? Uh, any Any changes that you want to... Uh, any changes specifically draft-wise or 
like full composition or anything with the way they play that you'd like to see changed in this game? I don't really know, man. Um, I think the biggest thing was the, I would say just if you have someone who's snowballing, even if it's not like um, Fiora stacking life, still like Fiora still has so much healing in the kit, you should definitely get Executioner's Calling or some form of yeah. uh, Grievous Wounds earlier. And I do think that Hecarim or the jungler of the Glacial team should focus on trying to get his lanes ahead. Like, I think Renekton and Fiora are very volatile, so if he just focused on ganking them and getting Yasuo or Akali ahead, and, and Yasuo and Ak Yasuo was kind of holding it down, like, he, he wasn't dying. He didn't feed, so, and that lane matchup, I would say, is, like, almost unplayable. So, if he can just hold it down, that would be awesome. Uh, but I think the jungler for Glacial should just try to focus on ganking Come in. Uh, and snowballing his lanes, so. Here. Oh, here, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, yeah. We're going into game two. Hopefully soon. Make sure you stick around, because literally the second after this game ends, we will be starting our executive league uh, match, which is second league economy team moving up to executive the Pace Tasters versus... Globo Jim, Purple Cobras, who are one of my picks as being a, a top, at least a top four executive team. So definitely stay. We're getting everyone in now. Yep, and I, I am excited to see those those executive league games. But right now, it's economy time, and I well, we have a excited. fourth back door for Apollo in a row. I need it. I need Survey. it. I would put money on it. It says there will be some form of crazy okay. shit happening, Apollo. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna put. I would put money on it. There is some Ooh. form of backdoor or steal, maybe something crazy. So we will yeah, see. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I agree with you, here, man. But all I've got to say is. Do you really expect anything less from the Economy League? These, these are the games that are beautifully relatable. Games of titans. These are the games where people sitting at home on their computer, headphones in, they've got the bag of nacho cheese Doritos by their side and maybe a blue mo mountain blue Powerade, kind of a weird combo. but And they're just sitting there like, I want to play competitive League of Legends in a server that's as cool as this one. And then they look and they see they see some of these plays and they're like, oh man, I could do that. So I mean I mean it's an it's inspiration. It really is a beautiful thing we have here, the Economy League, and it should never be underestimated. So yeah, we are we're waiting currently to get waiting. Into draft. On, yeah, we're waiting to get into pro draft. So, kind of pulling a little bit of a stall move here. So, uh, do you watch competitive at all? Like, uh, not not necessarily this league, but like actual LCS at all? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, this who's weekend is pretty big. It's hype, dude. Um, yeah. Every for, game is huge. You well, got shout. I, mean, I don't what, watch which, NA. Which Oh, I'm excited for Shalke. Like, I want Shalke to, to win. I know, like, Mad Lions for sure deserves They're it. They're slumping, dude. They no, they don't deserve it. it. They, just, they, know, like, they, don't I, deserve, they don't deserve a thing. If they deserve it, they will go out there and they true. will win three games and they will deserve it. But I want but Shalke if they're gonna go, to crush them. They're going to win them. the whole season and then they're going to lay down come playoffs. They don't deserve anything. If they That's deserved true. it, they would have beat Rogue Week 9. <laughs> That's true. So, I mean, yeah, to be I mean, fair... That's also, I mean, that might be what happens to C9 here, right? To yeah. be fair. But and this is one thing I love about the non-gauntlet and non-championship points qualifiers. You get you get to see these teams have to play it out. Yeah, for true. sure. Um, but yeah, so I want Schalke to win. Um, I am picking G2 to win the whole thing, though. That, that's my team. That's 
sounds like the most front runner shit, but I, I'm a Caps fan. I think he is like he's easily my favorite player. Yeah, and yeah, I I I am a fanatic fan who likes Caps, and my my good old three boys caps broxa and reckless and now i'm just like scattered across the earth like ashes blown in the wind <sighs> i just wanna uh... okay and it looks like we are gonna be getting a draft here already so um so we have uh the Echo and Aphelios bands coming out from the side. I'm, I'm hearing myself currently. Um, we have the Echo and Aphelios bands coming out here from the side of Sensei, Sensei, Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron. And then we have an adaptation here coming out from Glacial Inferno Academy. We have the Yasuo band and the Nocturne band coming out first round instead of those AD carry bands. Maybe looking to prioritize getting an ADC counter pick here and leaving up the Caitlyn and the Ash in this second round. As I said, I wanted to see them not stray away from some of those AD carry bands. They've done it, and I think that's a really smart adaptation. And this is why coaching can be really big for some of these lower level teams. It helps them be able to learn and grow and fix a lot of in game mistakes that they maybe make. And hopefully, they can come back in this game too and maybe show a little better performance. But it will be Volibear being the first lock-in here for the side of Karate Squadron. Good top mid, or a good top jungle flex gives some easy point-and-click CC and a lot of early-game snowball potential. Very commonly seen jungler nowadays can pretty much fight into anything due to just how tanky he is, but equally just doing so much damage. Yeah, he'll for sure be in the jungle. I think this is an, a no-name pick. Um, I think Volibear... I'm kind of low on Volibear. I think he is, like, worse set in the jungle. Like, they kind of uh, have a similar skill set, but Volibear is, like... <laughs> I feel like after level 3, Volibear is just so useless. Like, his level 3 gank is is god tier like he runs at you he stuns you and he basically one shots you and then i never have seen a champ fall off harder in my life um his tower diving is good if you're ahead but like he's just worse set to me that's just how i feel like i just feel set is so they're the same champ right but set is just so good um yeah one thing i will say though the point and click cc is very nice for volley bear though sets face breaker is pretty similar but the Volibear ult could be big here for turret dives with stuff like Galio, with stuff like Tristana. And it looks like we have a proper dive comp coming in. As on the other side, we have Jinx and Olaf. So uh, a hyperscaling AD carry here, which is a little bit of a change up from the gen, but uh, not going for the ADC counter pick, despite leaving up most of the, the choices that they banned last time, plus the Tristana. It looks like they're going to go to Morgana here into a possible Galio support, possible Galio mid here. Both have been seen pretty recently. So uh, what, what what champs do you think would round out these comps really well? Like if, if you're just playing like a Sims City level draft. Okay, um, I'm not certain what's going on, but it looks like... If you Board here, not going to give that one back over to the side of Karate Squadron and the Akali taken away as well. So we're going to see these champs that a lot of these champs that were played last game get taken straight to the ban bench because they don't want to face it again. And I mean that top lane was pretty volatile, so it's like they're going to go ahead and pick a completely new matchup here. And it looks like. Yone may be the final ban here. So banning both Yasuo and Yone, both of the sword bros going to be taken out here. As the final ban will come through here for Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron in just a moment, or SRIKS for anyone who needs to help remember it. And it will be Aurelia taken out. So lots and lots of mobile champions being taken off the board here. Lots of mobile AD champs specifically. 
but we'll have to see what they round out this comp here. They don't have much in the way of engage or tank currently on the side of Glacial, so may need to get some of that in the top lane. Would maybe like to see just a strict tank top blind pick and then grab your counter pick for mid. Alrighty, I Looks am... Like the blind rise is here. Hello? Wait, what'd you say? Sorry, I was having some issues, but I have returned. Um, got everything okay, fixed cool. up. Also, I w didn't see the pro draft the first time. Are these the same bands? These look a lot different to me, like Yonan's things? Are those yeah, the same so, so Zoe is actually the pick here. Not Rise. Okay. It is Zoe is going to come through. And it looks like Trundle will be the answer. So it looks like it could be a Trundle jungle Volibear top, or it could be just a double flex and they play whichever one they prefer. But I think the Trundle's a little bit of an odd pick here, considering some of the stuff you could possibly pick with a Galio comp. I don't feel like Trundle's necessarily one of the best turret divers to match, or like one of the best dive champs to be able to get in on this comp and really just just blow it up. A champ in the top lane it's increased healing and benefits from life still and attack speed. Who do you where do you think the trundle's going? I'm gonna give you a, a I'm gonna give you He's gonna go full life steal. Yeah. Fair enough, honestly. I'm interested but, to see what they yeah. counterpick here. I think a Kled would be amazing into this. Just get the free grievous wound. <laughs> but it looks like they may pick the NASAS to scale into it. Okay, so it looks like no real engage on the side of Glacial Inferno, as, by the way, not certain exactly where this Galio and Lux are going. They can flex between both mid and support. Folly and Trundle can flex between top and eight jungle, so things still really up in the air here on the side of Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron. But for Glacial Inferno Academy, they do have this with the Morgana shields on, going to have... I would have loved to see maybe a Karma come out here. I feel like the team-wide movement speed would have been huge for Glacial Inferno, but instead they're going to lock the Morgana. Going to have a lot of trouble actually locking down with this Galio ultimate, you use because Morgana and Olaf are going to be able to counter that CC pretty well. Nas is just looking to scale up in the top side. Okay. And Rise versus maybe Lux mid, I would... Or, okay, do you think this is Lux mid Galio support or Galio mid Lux support? Oh, wait, Rise is Zoe. Oh, this is so yeah. confusing. Why? Why? So I think Galio mid Lux support is what I'm going to guess. Actually, wait, I think it's Galio support because they counterpicked Lux, and Lux is a counterpick to Zoe, so that's, what, that's actually my guess because Galio is just going to burst. Galio is not burstable. Or no, wait, I'm getting so confused, man. I th keep thinking Lux is against Galio. I'm thinking Ry Zoe is Rise, but Rise is actually Zoe. Welcome to Economy League of Legends, where we don't even know which champ is on which team, and it looks like we've gotten out of champ select, because... Oh, goodness, well... Uh, Accident, he says. He banned the wrong champ, or picked the wrong champ. He hit the MB button. That's fun. So, okay, so now that we are done with draft, let's go back to our little podcast here. Uh, so, um, you're, you're rooting on Schalke. Do you think they have a chance of making a deep run at Worlds? If they are able to make it? Hell no. But I do think that if Schalke beats Mad convincingly, they're my pick to go to the finals. Yeah, I personally... I don't know if I favor Schalke over Fnatic right now, be just because of the the way the way they looked. At, I gr granted Rogue did not look that impressive. You used to. They really didn't. But I will say the way Schalke, the way Schalke is beating people and the way Fnatic is beating people, I think that could be a deep series in playoffs. So I think it will be based on Fnatic's drafting. So for me, Fnatic had a very. Um, after watching some, like, listening to some podcasts and then watching the series back, it's like, they had, like, a pretty awesome strategy going into Rogue. They, like, kind of hard-countered them. Like, 
They played the AP jungle with the Evelyn, which was really sick. And they let Larson have his Azir, but they just picked like Lucian into it and basically kept him under turret the whole game. Yeah. And like, if you're, you know, I, as someone who plays like Azir, like Lucian matchups, like it's doable, but you, you basically can never step up. Yeah, you, and you're, you're Evelyn, made not you can step up, right? Yeah, so he just has to basically farm under turret. And I don't know, they just it, they just seemed like they knew they had the strat to beat Rogue. Like, Rogue has Rogue is like this sick team fighting team. I also think Rogue looked a little off, personally. Like, I, I, I was going to pick Fnatic based on veterans and just... I, I like Fnatic as well, but I do think Rogue... They just looked off. Oh, I picked Rogue. I picked Rogue, and I picked G2, and I picked Shalka. But now, I mean, I'm excited for it, and I can go ahead and confirm that Trundle is going to be going top lane, Volibear is going to be going jungle, unless they do switch it at the very last minute. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, uh, do you keep up with any other leagues, like LPL, LCK at all, or...? I've been like a league fanboy, professional league led. That's why I'm doing this LBLCS cast. I watch all of it. Yeah. So uh, you said you didn't watch NA, so I didn't know if you were. I watch NA. Play. I just like I've been watching the playoffs, like. But yeah, NA, sure. it's like really depressing. Like, yeah. go watch everyone in the everyone in the stream. Go watch the LPL finals, and then watch whatever NA series we're gonna watch. Like, that shit will depress you. It's yeah. like watching JDG play against... Uh, and against top esports. Oh just my beautiful, god, man. that was just, like, insane. Like, just, like, that game five was, like, actually the most, like, ridiculous back and forth I've ever seen. So, um... But yeah, I would say... I would say, um... Yeah. So, um. Anyway, uh, who do you think's winning Korea now that SK that T one is out of in the first round? I didn't have T one. I I, yeah. I thought T one could lose to Gen G personally. Um, yeah. losing to Afrika was a surprise, but I don't know. Um, yeah, Afrika. I have Dom one. I think Dom one's like insanely good. Oh yeah, Showmaker looks so good. But I also I I, I really like do want I do want world. Chovy. I want Chovy to get. Like, there's so much experience on all of their players. You have Ruler and BDD, who've both won so much in their careers. And then you have people like Showmaker, these young talents, him and Nuggery. Really good players, really strong solo laners. You have Canyon in that jungle carrying. And then you have DRX. I, Kovi is just hungry and looks amazing. The three mid laners for those teams are almost unbeatable. Chovy's been kind of inting lately, though. That's like I think that's one reason why I'm so nervous about DRX. They just they're like giving me uh, what's it called? Bad vibes. Vibe. They're giving me um Griffin vibes, <laughs> where they're like look really dominant, and then like yeah. I'm just like oh it's a CV Max team with yeah. Chovy and Doran, who they've been like kind of been hit or miss. Like I think Chovy's like insane. Don't get me wrong. Like I watch a lot of his replays. I think he's really good, but it's just like God, I, I have. I don't know. For some reason, I just have I don't have a lot of faith. I think Caria is like the best. Oh yeah, for sure. Caria like, is so good. Ridiculous. I, although like Barrel is really good. I think LCK this year was like really fun to watch. I think the last few years yeah. it's been kind of or the last like year, two it's years. Been, it's been kind of it looked best. like the, the the level of play went up a little this year. I think it, it, it returned a little bit to. Well, there I was a lot. Of, there's was, a lot of competition. Four teams had over 13 wins, and then Afrika was still able to fight. Because they got smacked at the, the uh, their like rift rivals, the midsummer cup, you know, and midseason cup, yeah. which yeah, apparently to like the eastern regions means a lot more than it does here. So, compared, c considering they all got knocked out, like I think in quarterfinals, um, uh, I Jinji made it through, I believe. Jinji made it to semis, we, but yeah. then they got knocked out. Yeah, I know no one made it to finals, but they did get one team to semis. But yeah. China is just a totally different animal at this point in League of Legends. They are so, so strong. I do think I was, that Damwon could potentially... Oh yeah, they have the firepower. I think Damwon is a pretty easy top three lock for me, I would say. I'd say maybe top... 
Uh, so I'm guessing, is it top and JDG are locked for worlds now due to championship points? And like yeah. JDG won spring, top won summer, and then well, they played each other. Yeah, they played each they other. Played each they other were in both. So, so there's no way anyone beat them in championship points. No, so now it. So they, I think they were already kind of locked when they just got yeah. to the finals. Yeah. So, so by the way, the reason we are talking is because we had to remake a draft and we're really in spectator delay. So we're just trying to, you know, give you all the good old content. It's I mean, guys, old... this is the most exciting. If anyone watches Competitive League, this is like the best time of the year. So. Oh yeah, it's like Christmas. Yeah, it, there's just so much because, content. So because much the World stuff. Finals happens at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One uh, day it'll be an NA. One day. But uh, yeah, I mean, so much hype is coming out. You have KDA dropping songs. You have new champion leaks like blowing up on the internet. You have. Also, uh, I don't know if anyone. I'm a Legends Rune Terra player. The new set came out yesterday. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, and also the new TFT set getting released yeah. soon fades. It actually looks up. quite good. I'm going to probably grind, go back to my TFT grind for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But overall, I think, I think Riot is doing such a good job right now. I, I've, I've liked their recent balancing. I've liked like, most of the stuff they've put out recently. They're diversifying their games around a lot. I think they're managing it really well, honestly. But we are now into the loading screen, and just a couple interesting things to point out here. We it is not going to be Guardian on either of these shielding supports. It's Airy for both of them, and then you have Electrocute and Ignite on the Zoe mid. So going for that very aggressive build on Zoe, looking to just one shot. But Galio may not be the target for that necessarily. Could be looking to do that more to the Tristan. Zoe here. is going for like the traditionally Korean. Um... <laughs> runes that have been popularized recently by the it's a very high ranking zoe one trick so a lot of the korean players have been switching to this rune setup um i'm not a fan i like nimbus cloak i think nimbus cloak on zoe is just like fun first of all like that's my biggest thing it's such a like an insane um yeah you know it just gives it so much value uh, even after the nerf i think it's ridiculous but i do think that the um obviously like time warp tonic and biscuits is can't be understated how strong that is yeah. So I, I prefer the airy page or the spellbook page for that same reason, but I understand the strength of this page. I do think Zoe is insanely good into Galio, by the way. So the Zoe was able to spot out this five man invade here. They're walking over all kinds of vision here, but it looks like they're just going to try to get a force a deep ward here. So Morgana's going to start the W to dissuade them from that deep vision and grab that early spell Thief's proc. So 15 gold in the lead. For the side. So yeah, wait, oh, I'm getting it backwards now. That is Glacial. That is Glacial Inferno Academy on the red side. And you have uh, Sensei uh, Karate Squadron. Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron. Um, yeah, the other thing I would say is we saw his name, but Nasus. His name was Let Me Stack 10 Minutes. This guy's yeah. a nasty main. So he yeah, might so. have been like, okay, this is my chance. Like, I, I don't know how effective the Trundle matchup is, but he's like, okay, well, I get this this lane that he, he thinks he can pick his main into. Yeah. Should be exciting stuff. I do think this is a pretty decent team for Nasus. Um, three melee champs are always good. And Tristan is the only one with, like, an escape. So should be able to do stuff. Also, if Bud's going to play the split push build or the split push game, then Nasus should eventually be able to outscale him, right? Like, that's the theory behind it. Uh, yeah, the Trundle is decent into Nasus in the bullying, but should be overall able to win once he gets around maybe 350, 400 stacks. But Trundle, till then, with the ultimate siphoning healing, siphoning those stats away is going to be quite oppressive. And yeah, for those who may not know, Nasus stacks up, grows more and more strong over time, so he's really just looking to try to uh, wait it out, grind it out, and then he'll eventually be one of I the strongest. I don't like his runes. I will say that. I am a fan of the spellbook page on Nasus. So here's the thing. Nasus is actually like pretty nuts in the mid game. I would say the fallacy of Nasus is that he's a late game champ because he, he infinitely scales, but... He's a melee champ without much movement speed. Like he does, it's really hard for him to get onto the backline in the late game. They can. It's very easy for people just to peel him off. 
But with the Spellbook page and abusing Nimbus Cloak, him being able to swap for Ghost, Heal, Exhaust, Cleanse. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and it's going to be a jump in here. It's going to be a flash coming out of the Jinx Force there. Not too much to be had. Just the one summoner spell out of the AD carry. But could look for a re-engage here as they're going to field goal the Lux Binding. But she will hit both with the E and getting some pretty big damage down here. As the Tristana is once again taking lane priority in this lane. It looks like... like for the okay. most part, this Galio could be getting run down here. He's going to get hit with the axe. Okay, nice. Oh, and he gets knocked up out of that. That was really bad, but the bubble misses. And it looks like they may not have finishing damage here, though, as the another axe comes in, and he's going to walk it out with about 200 HP as the bubble and the Q both missed and no ignite committed. It was a nice I little think Zoe, I think the Zoe could have killed with ignite and W there, but... Oh, for sure. I also think Zoe just needs needed to wait on her bubble, like... Yeah. When you have that position that she had, where it, like, uh, where Olaf was able to get in front, it, all the onus is on Galio then, right? You can just chill. You're like, okay, like, force his flash. Like, make it so he has to commit. Because if he stays in that position where he's just chilling right there, he's just getting beat up by Ooh, Olaf. Right? lands, but not too much to be had there. I got way too excited over that. It's okay. Uh, um, not that it was a Lux and a Jinx. Like, last the game, there were, like, two kills a minute, so... Um, but it does yeah. look like the name's Posture Oh, it looks like the Polygank's gonna come in here, but the Olaf is gonna counter. We'll struggle into this Trundle, though. But first blood, late flashes, and he's not gonna be able to get out as the Volley Bear does pick up the first blood in the top side. His Galio TP was committed up there. So this Zoe should be able to shove a wave into tower as the Galio's still waiting around top side, possibly looking to pick up some turret plates here. As the TP comes back in, we could be looking at a redive here. Is the Volley Bear going to just chunk him with the E, but not much to be had here as Nas is just getting abused in the top lane. But the mid lane waves are crashing the tower, and then Zoe should have a decent XP lead off this. Zoe is slow pushing the mid lane, which is not what you should be doing here. Yeah, it's not optimal uh, at all. At this point, yeah. you hard cover, you freeze. Oh, and we have a ADC's game crash. So uh, if someone could possibly... Roll the lovely welcome to the LBLCS video real quick, uh, Mr. Streamer, if that's at all possible. Oh, wait, never mind. They're already back in. Back. Record time. 15 second speed run on the on it. So. so the slow push. Yeah. For the audience, the reason she wants to fast push is because when you see him up there, you want to deny him XP. Because right now, he's only going to miss maybe one or two creeps, and he's going to get most of this wave. Now, yeah. we're going to see... if if he walks through there, like she does have the glacial, um, not glacial, GLP, so she might be able just to potentially zone him, um, especially if he tries to cancel her back. So we'll have to see when the action returns. But yeah, I didn't know she had a GLP due to the fact that I was sucked. Oh, and the drought he will help. No, oh, don't pop it. Let him sit there for a bit and think about what he just did and miss a couple of things. But yeah, so decent poke. She has no mana though. Yeah. Oh, nice damage. She does, have, she does have double biscuits, though, with Time Warp Tonic, so she could look to pop those and maybe stay if she wants to, because I've just got a little bit of lag there. But uh, it's all good. As they, they're both now taking over to six. Zoe probably looking to stay at this point for a lost chapter back. As that ghost did fall in an unfortunate position, probably won't be able to pick that up very easily as the Morgana's walking up to the Tristana here. She's going to dodge out on them. The Tristana could look to start this fight off here, but will choose not to. Oh, but the Olaf's coming down bot. This Tristana may have to hop away. Morgana goes oh for the God. flash binding and Lux cancels the recall. She's going to get taken down. The Olaf doesn't pick up the axe. It looks like they're going to try to burst her anyway, but the Olaf's taking a lot of damage here. The Jinx is doing quite a bit, but they just don't have the finishing damage there on the Tristana. She's going to be able to walk it out. Now 1-1 one one with 500 gold lead for the side of Rand or Sensei Randall's intermediate, intermediate karate, karate squadron. squadron. There you go. I am going to have a lovely word with whoever Sensei Randall is about this name. As my vocal cords are going to be going out by the time I'm done saying this name about 500 times. Easily my, my, my favorite name in the LBLCS. 
I don't know, clown, something simple about Clown 9. I just like it. I, I mean, I know I know the reference, but... I know it's a reference, but still, I'll be there. Oh, oh, hey, well, Miss Karate Squadron. Oh, they that hurt whenever you can. They're the Karate Squadron, too. They're not even, like, yeah. the advanced. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's economy. You don't... The advanced Karate Squadron's obvious. That's Move the CEO. Move the yeah. LCS. Yeah. yeah, that's the LCS. At this point. So Bud has a decent lead here. Doing his classic, rushing the I, what I assume to be the ravenous hydra with those items, yeah. Followed by the bork, then the death dance, and then the bloodthirster. The classic. Yep. Um, I do Truly think that classico. a. I definitely think that a bramble vest would be for sure a good buy for our boy here. To be honest, I would have liked to have actually seen. Rush this game into Olaf and into Olaf and Nasus. I think Bork would have been really nice, but yeah. um, yeah, I feel like the Ravenous Hydra is just going to be mainly for shoving waves. But you don't really want to brainlessly shove waves into a Nasus. That's the, the way I personally think about it. Because if you shove all these waves, and you're just giving Nasus stacks once he gets 20, 30 percent CDR, he's able to really maximize effectiveness there. So it looks like Morgana's gonna walk up here, maybe fish for a binding. Does not land it onto the luck. She'll be able to dodge out on that. And yeah, things have slowed down quite a bit here. Uh, still a pretty slow game. 700 gold the lead. But overall, the compositions are sitting pretty. And as the Olaf and Volibear are both at pretty important spikes right now in power, still will be strong until about level 11. Yeah, I'm surprised that the Olaf is not. I'm um, maybe he's gone for too many ganks, but I think like if Olaf's path path well, they should just be so strong. I, that's a champ. I feel like Olaf is like the strongest champ until he dies, right? Like he's just so strong. If he can keep clearing, he becomes like a menace. One v nine machine should secure the dragons. While yeah. Bear is like more of the ganking style jungler where he wants to get a little standoff yeah. in the top lane. I'd like to see I've seen Volibear possibly go towards the Zoe there. I want to see a play. I want to see something happen in this mid lane. If you're going to draft this early point and click aggression and you're going to stack CC champions, use the ult, turret dive, make Here use we of go. the it looks like the Persona is going to be taken very low. The spell shield double up on the Olaf. She's going to flash out and jump out. He should be able to Die. He was going to die here to the bomb, and the Tristan is taken out by the Morgana, but the Zoe's going to be fighting the Galio and the Volibear here, using the Ignite down. He, sh he needs to flash in here. Flash in! Flash in! Oh my goodness, decides not to flash in, and he's going to be taken out by the Volibear, just not committing to these fights. Ah, that's unfortunate, but the Nasus trading pretty I am very surprised. Flash. The mid lane getting very low, but it looks like a fight in the top side, and Trundle's just cleaning Nasus flock. Walking back up here may not be safe, as the Trundle does have the flash advantage as the ghost is blown. Galio being able to sit pretty comfortably at negative 3 HP in the mid lane. But, yeah. I feel like if you're going to go for this electrocute ignite style Zoe, you have to be ready at any minute to say, okay, he's at 300 health, I'll flash in. I'll auto him with the flash Ooh. and ignite, but holy cow, that's a dead Morgana. Not going to commit the stopwatch at all there. Knowing that she's dead to rights, that's smart. Not blowing the... The flash could have possibly kept her safe, but overall just saving that summoner for a gank or like a roam or something else in the future. But looks like Trundle's already taken four plates topside and it's already another big lead for oh, Sensei Randall's was... intermediate karate squadron. I just don't think Morgana thought she would die from like half health. Um, to the bomb, but that's just Trist. Yeah, it's, there's it's so nuts, just, right? Question mark pings in the old brain. It's fine. Yeah, it so happens. it looks like they're gonna go for the dragon here. Yep. You see him top. You see him top. Just go for it. Yeah, I mean, they do see the Olaf on the top side. It looks like they may. They are going to go to it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're gonna go ahead and start it up as the Morgana's fishing here. The Zoe does have a little bit of mid priority. She will look to roam over here, most likely. No, she's going to stay mid, but they don't take. They are. The red team is stalling them out here, and they're going to be able to rift herald 
they could possibly use to get some gold onto this Nasus or onto the Zoe. But overall, the name of the last two games has been turret. The last two early games, I'm pardon, have been turret plates. They have just. Sensei Randall's Intermediate Karate Squadron has just been stomping into overall turret plates. I mean, that's like, Bud. I, that's the Bud playstyle, man. He is going to hit the top turret, and you need to come and stop him. Um, I agree with one of your assessments earlier in the draft. I think Nasus is just not the pick. I guess this guy is a Nasus main, but I, I think you just want to pick stuff that can fight Trundle or set up ganks. And then it's basically free gold. Like, he's just pushing up. He has no wards in the tri -bush. Like, you know what I mean? He, he could just be coming up here and punishing Bud, but Bud just does not care. Yeah, even through the wither, just going to take this turret and probably turn it straight on to the Nasus with the healing. Look at the healing, but the Nasus getting him quite low. As the flash is blown from the trundle, though, but he does get that first top tower actually, and gets out with his life. So, overall worth, I guess. But, uh, yeah, and it looks like his team is going to be able to get the dragon as the two man luck lands. The Morgana flashes in here. He's going to zone them all away, but the re engage comes in with the volley barrel, going to slow them all up. Morgana's going to go down here as the Olaf is going to pick up one kill there, but the Galio going to come down here. Gonna knock up the Jinx, she's gonna be yeah, taking low. The Jinx is gonna look to finish it off. No, the Lux Knight finishes her off. And it looks like they may try to chase onto Zoe here with the Lux finding, possibly. I uh, don't think they're gonna be able to get into range here, and it looks like it will be like a two for one with the Drake as the Lux finding goes wide. Woo! And I love Zoe. I hope Zoe wins XD. Hey, don't we all? Such love a fun her champ. Such in a, a good champ in a lovely, like, wholesome parenting way. Love Zoe. I think most people actually despise Zoe, which is fine. I, yeah. I, I, I know why. Okay, this is a solo kill. Yeah, this is a solo kill. This is a solo kill. Go, 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 go. Go, Heal. go, 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 go. go. Protobelt, okay. flash, protobelt, ignite, please. You're so fed. You're yeah, so strong. You yeah, that was a solo kill, 100%. Well, I mean, the Galio still does have flash. Maybe we're just getting a little lanty here, but I no, think no, that was. I, I actually promise you, if he just walked up, yeah, and he does hit him not with the have star earlier and ignited him right away, he would just kill him. No proto belt, and he could have picked the proto belt up and followed the flash. But it's okay. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to commit. He didn't know where Volley Bear was. Yeah, that he is. It's another is bubble here. It's for sure a, a kill, though. Clear the wave with the proto belt. Bubble him. Yeah, that's. I mean. Okay, he gets oh, it. I nice said. Save Dead. it, Olaf. Save it. Good. Well played by the Olaf to know not to pop the sleep there. Let everything get set up and then kill. Some of my teammates don't usually always do that, but that that does dissuade me from playing champs like Zoe and Lilia at times, but very nice play oh, yeah. there by the Such Olaf. A frustrating the experience. When the John out comes up and autos your slept target, you're just like, come on, dude. Yeah. Anasis is going to commit ult here, but the Trundle, and it's just a big meat stack just autoing each other down. Look at these beefy boys here. As the Olaf and the Volley Bear are fighting, and Olaf's getting the better, they're going to flash away and stick around, but slow up the Galio. He does get Galio TP out, but I feel like he could have finished that kill there even without flashing. Hang on. So Bud getting... QSS to get rid of Wither so he can continue to try to win the 1v1, um, which I think is good. I, I also think that, like, again, Nasus, if he just... Oh, that binding did not land Riot, but uh, okay, go off, I guess. But the Tristana going to get taken out by the Jinx Sultan. It will be 80 carries traded under tower. So lane state is pretty much even. No real winner off of that, but... You know, I really do want to see this mid lane get aggressive. Let's let's see some plays. Let's see some roams. If you're going to sh hard shove these waves with the Widen's build, you can go ahead and try to make a make a play. Find out the enemy jungler. Grab a chunk on him. Get some vision or something. Like, you yeah, know, I overall, think I feel like Zoe this is, is really strong right now. In between games last night, or not last night, uh, last game, uh, was priority. Whenever you have the priority on the map, the side of Glacial and Inferno him. needs to try to do something with it and maybe get an like try to get an advantage, else they're gonna slowly bleed out whenever the opposing team gets these advantages, because I believe they only got maybe one turret plate, and that was or two turret plates, and that was with Rift Herald. So 
Yeah, Bud really? just does not care. Just pushing up to this turret. Just obviously, if any poke he takes, he'll just heal up right away. It's gonna take more than one person to stop him. The Nasus is up, actually a little stronger though, as the Zoe does not commit this. As they're gonna fight here straight up, the USS used on the Wither, and they are smacking. Look at the life steal, boys. <laughs> Look at the life steal, lads! But the Olaf comes in and ruins the beautiful one v one, beating Holy each other's ass. Hell. They they just don't die. They just don't they're do literally. it. <laughs> Tristana's gonna go into the Jinx here, and she's gonna heal up as the Lux Salt gonna say thank he he uwu smiley face and take that kill pretty quickly. Oh my god, that but was yeah, hilarious. That they were just smacking each beautiful. other with their clubs. Yeah, the conquerors <laughs> were stacked <laughs> up. The pow, 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 pow. Yeah, but overall, truly a gentleman's duel. They knew exactly what they wanted out of that fight, and they got it. NASA's is now sitting almost at 400 stacks pre-20 minutes, though. So, that's worrying. As the Galio comes in here to save his mid, we'll be taking Drowsy. Kill the turret, kill the turret, kill the turret, kill the turret. Ah! Ah, this is economy. Let's go. Really, <laughs> really well played, though. Um, to get the bubble, gets the damage chunk down. We're gonna look, be looking to fight around this mountain as both teams are grouping. But the Trundle is choosing to stay top. Has the TP available if he is needed in this fight? But oh, this, like this might be a fight, actually. The problem for the side of uh, Glacial Inferno East, or Academy is they need to be able to get in on these fights and they oh, have a they have very little kick to trouble CPing in. Looks like the Volley Bear may be able to get the smite here. He is able to get the smite down, but the Nasus on to the Volley Bear and the Galio and Tristana are already dead. It looks like they're just straight up winning the fight, but the Trundle just going in with the lifesteal. Unkillable Chad dies instantly as I say that, but is able to take down the backline AD carry with no issue. But the Nasus is starting to get huge, sitting at 1, 2, and 4. But with that stacking Q passive, just getting even stronger by the minute. Every single one of these minions, just another step towards greatness, if you ask me. And when you're chasing greatness, just remember, it's not about what you say. It's about what you do. So, um... Looks like we're in a bit of a lull state here as Red Team makes up some of the gold deficit that happened and they were able to they were unfortunately not able to get the dragon off of it and it will be Infernal Soul, which I feel like really favors the Red Team side if they are able to get that. But I highly doubt seeing them get Infernal Soul at this point, even except like if they are if they do go late enough to get Infernal Soul, I feel like they've won the game by that point. Yeah, that, good job for Old No Name to secure the dragon there before having to use his ult to get out. Yeah, uh, that was. We're seeing some life here from Glacial though. They are starting to like fight. Um, I do think they like. I like their comp. Like, I actually think they have a decent comp here. They have double frontline for Zoe Jinx with the Morgana shield, basically to protect her from any, like any CC. And if Jinx can just free hit, it's like pretty pretty nuts. Um, yeah, I think, I think you know this might be. I think this is Glacial Academy's first match, so we have to be wary of that. But I do think that uh, they're just a little afraid to pull the trigger, right? Like we've seen a, quite a few plays where we're like, I think the reason we're getting so eager is because we know that they have the potential to potentially pop off, right, and like do some some big some big damage, some big plays. So I want to see if they're able to uh okay we're gonna have a play here on bud oh yeah and they're gonna try to use the morgana ult stun up the trundle he is gonna he did qss is early and he is going to die he did not qss the morgana stun as the nasus is taking chunks out of the galio now and this conqueror nasus may be the right pick now for them as with the ghost he may be the the one able to make up for their lack of engage but this morgana hitting bindings has been okay a, a pseudo type of engage, a nice hit there onto the Jinx, gonna force the flash off, but the bubble lands. And Tristana is gonna get blocked for by the Volley Bear, blocking that Zoe Paddlestar, but uh, 
Just want to point out an impressive couple performances here. Both of these early game junglers are getting it done, sitting at 4 and 5 and 1 respectively. They both look very good, and I think that they can hopefully complete the game and maybe try to snowball into the 30 minute mark. But once you get to that point, Volivar and Olaf are getting pretty hard beat by most every champ in the game. So it looks like we will have Blade of the Rune King, but he is going to have substantial difficulty into the Nasus, who is currently sitting on. Let's let's get a little counter. Oh, only 500 stacks on the Nasus at 22 minutes. That's not. That's not gonna hurt that bad, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh. One thing that is the problem for Red Team, and I said this a little bit last game, and I'm going to say it again, they just don't have the extremely quality engage potential here. Like, I mean, Morgana and Olaf can try to start off fights together, or Zoe picks. Like, this is definitely a very good pick comp, don't get me wrong. Olaf, Zoe, Morgana, all good for picks, but like, whenever it comes to actually engaging when they have to, it's going to be hard for him here. It's going to QSS the... Oh my He's going God. to QS as the Wither, and it's another fight, but the lifesteal coming through from the Trundle is just massive as the Nasus is going to walk out. And Nasus is going to find some, so, like, get some Bramble Vest. Oh, here he comes. Nasus bringing his friends again. Literally, just build a Bramble Vest, build an Executioner's, any of them. But the Morgana is just getting slapped up and clapped up as he goes in to try to help his teammate. Going to have to walk it out here. Gets slowed by the Pillar, but seems just losing mid lane outer for this. And good play by the Trundle, sitting at 1 and 4, but still able to stay alive in that situation. This is the Bud special. He will split push, and you have to send people to stop him. But the lack of Grievous Wounds, I mean, again, he's doing this kind of the same build. If you just can get the Grievous Wounds, you you can fight him in the 1v1. It, like, it looks like Olaf learned from last game. He got it pretty early. Yeah. But it just has to be something that Nasus gets. I don't know why Nasus is building a Spirit Visage. Like, it makes no sense, right? Actually, they have Galio, and then, I guess, the Lux, but Lux is going more of a support build. Yeah, Tristana does some magic damage as well, but it's kind of rare as they get the Olaf. Just got farmed like a melee minion. Tristana gonna pick that shut down up. And, yeah, things are looking a little more dire for their side, as these itemization choices have really shown through to be a big issue in these games. Feeling like if they could have ex itemized the Executioners or the, the Bramble, as someone has disconnected from the game, we could be seeing a pause come up here real quick. But it looks like maybe not. Interestingly, not paused just yet, as he reconnects, so he so should be a spectator client, like... Sometimes we don't know exactly how long they're DC'd for. Oh, okay. Like, it can be instant, and they could have been gone for a decent amount of time. Because of the delay. Oh, oh nice! Big nice chunk you. from the Zoe. Oh, nice! Oh, it's a Jinx follow-up. Gonna get the shutdown of Lux onto the Jinx. And that's... Look, I mean, they have carries. They can do the damage. But they just have to try to find some way to start off the actual fights they need to. But with limited lockdown, it's gonna be hard really fight here as Nas is sitting on the spirit message will be able to okay, take up a little more. Okay, but they have the Grievous Wounds. Look at this. And yep, and the second Grievous Wounds guy comes in, just insta-kill. Man, you have to feel for this Trundle, man. He's trying to take these for funs, these 1v1s, but every single time he does, guess who shows up? It's your boy. I'm Wicked on the Olaf, sitting at 6, 2, and 3, literally just cherry-picking this Trundle on cooldown. And Nasus looked like he's going for the Sterix Gauge again. Grievous Wounds is an item. Um, yeah, it's a very good one, to be honest. Very strong versus the, someone who stacks Life to Steal. Uh, but also and has his coal that he already stacks. So he should definitely sell that, get some wards. He can cover himself and split push. He is creating the pressure. It's just a matter of knowing when to create the pressure, right? Like, okay, Zoe? So he's going to oh, get no. locked up. Galio could follow up here, but he hits the wall and the flash is committed. The Morgana Black Shield would have saved her as the Tristana gets hit by a very questionable binding. Louie Cat's box. been on fire with these bindings, actually. She's been just sniping people out. Yeah, very good job by her. Has looked very good this game. And has really shown a 
almost a form of primary engage and disengage for this team when they really don't have one for much. As they are going to give the red buff on the mask instead of the jinx. Interesting call there. But uh, I would personally give it to the two item jinx here. That's 615 stacks. I am not an Astro player, so I don't know if that's a lot, but I that's imagine a that's lot. a lot. It's a enough. lot. It's a lot. <laughs> and he is just like raid boss. Is it one to one material? damage? Like one stack is one damage on the key raid. I'm not exactly certain. Any Nasusers in the chat can go ahead and drop us some stats and we'll see. I can, if I can actually read. Yeah, yeah so oh, it's yeah. one damage. It gains. Jeez. Three, so it gains three per minion killed. Well, against a champion or large monsters. Yeah, so it, his Q right now does... Oh, and it looks like Tristana's going to go straight in here on Morgana, damage. but she's going to get stunned up. The Flash is forced, but she still gets stunned, and the Jinx ult will take her out, but Jinx flashed in as well. Going to dodge out. Able to get out of there very well as the Olaf axes slow both of them down. Going to probably need to go unstoppable here. Going to commit onto this Lux with a massive magic shield, but she is going to get taken down as the Jinx gets taken down as well. We have the Olaf running into the fight. Zoe coming in with the bubble on top. Her bubble going to hit the volleyball, but he's going to ult to dodge out on that nice route. Use of, Olaf nice trying use. to clean up, but the Zoe just popping summoner after summoner after summoner on all of her. That's coming in from here from, from Nasus. She tries to commit the ult a bit, but it doesn't go. And the Galio is going to the Galio is going to get rooted up. We have oh, the nice taunt. taunt of the backline, but the Galio with the two-man taunt going to clean up the backline with the help of the Trundle as the volleyball is going to get shut down here. But Nasus is in no man's land. And let's see if they are able to catch him out here. May be able to walk this one out. Yeah, that yeah, was, that was a great... That was a great ult from Old No Name to go and stop oh, the player. The pillar coming in here could set up something. Oh my goodness, look at the attack speed from this man. He's just bonking, bonking some more. Bonk, bam, shut down. Onto the trundle there. Really nice play from him. This Blade of the Ruin King is putting in work for him, as well as this pillar onto the No Flash NASA, which is an interesting call into a pillar champ. As they are just going to look to turn straight onto the Baron here for the side of Sensei Randall's intermediate uh, karate and, uh, squadron. 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 I want to say Sensei's. Looks like they are not going to get the Infernal Soul. Here they are instead going to choose. Baron, I would personally have possibly liked to see them choose the soul here as it is a lasting buff and should help their early game woes a little bit. But uh, now they will have to wait five more minutes for that objective as the Zoe has crucially picked up some Grievous Wounds here into a lot of the healing from the Athenes. You have the Volibear healing, you have massive Trundle healing here. But uh, not certain exactly how okay. the uh, magic. Grievous Wounds. On Jinx, yeah, that's I would huge. be yelling at Nasus if I was his team. Like, ping this item. So I do in solo queue. I ping the item and then I spam ping the player. I Buy can't. It. I can't do that, man. I I get tilted when people do that to me over some stuff. So whenever I I, I just can't do that to other people. But I gosh, the Nasus is being for chunks. And if you just would build the heal cut, this Trundle wouldn't just walk up and heal okay, it all here back. Comes someone with it though. But here comes his best friend. Olaf, who is going to force the flash out, and now Natsa should have priority in this lane with the Olaf's help here. Going to go ahead and uh, just chill, clear some Krugs. And uh, Jinx looking to farm towards whatever that third may be, possibly a Reaver, possibly a Death Stance, not certain exactly. Yeah, but someone uh, in chat is pointing out the Morello on Zoe, although it is nice to have the Grievous Wounds, they are just stacking MR. Their two yeah. farmers have a lot of MR, so a Void Staff second would have been definitely... Yeah, I the, really uh, agree with item. that person in chat. And the Grievous Wounds are going to come down here onto the... He's almost going through. No, he's not. He's just dead. But they are pushing onto the base here, and as they come in for the struggle and the split push, they're losing bigger and bigger chunks of their base. As six turrets have now fallen to the only the one on the side of Glacial Inferno Academy. But, and, and yes, going back to the point, I agree with the person in chat because I feel like the Morello's flat magic penetration is just not doing that much into the opposing team composition. Like, you have a Volibear with Spirit Visage Merc Treads, and you have a Galio with Merc Treads and a Missile Map. You have 
uh, Lux with an Athenes. You have Death Stance plus QSS MR on the Trundle. Really avoid staff. Would probably have more sticking damage here. That's where you say, guys, you all can handle the Grievous Wounds. I trust you all to stay alive and do your damage. I like, mean, or I would even that, like the Death Cap, yeah. too. Like, yeah, I, I think it's fine to good. sit on the um, Oblivion Orb. But, yeah. yeah, I would not I have think, finished. Even in this game, I don't think the Oblivion Orb rush is good for Zoe, because the only one it really helps her that much into is the Jinx. Not the Jinx, the Tristana. Well, I she think has it's... It would be, do decent into the Lux as well, but the others have built 60 plus MR, so... Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the ones that are pretty problematic running in. It also just fight. depends, like, on how early she gets it, right? Like, I think it's pretty reasonable for Trist, for uh, Zoe to have Ludens plus double pen by the time they um, are. Everyone's on one and a half items. I, I think Galio going for Abyssal Mask is a little troll. Uh, really? I, I hard, hard disagree. I think it's a really good buy. But why is that? They have one magic damage user. I guess they have Morgana, but that's I about mean, it. I mean, I maybe would have preferred Aroa, actually. I think I understood. I would have preferred, but... like, Leandri's or even... I think... I actually think Hour Hourglass would have been better, because it lets him go for the flash engages. Because the main issue with... I don't know. The, the, again, this is you're just playing frontline for this Triss, right? All your damage is Triss, because Trundle is not grouping. So you need to just be able to get in the front line. And Abyssal Mass doesn't give you much... Of anything, I think that is kind of a trap item. I do like the um, the pickup on the bramble vest to easily proc the uh, the thing. But I, I'm a fan of. I, I honestly think just going like full AP on Galio is, is usually the correct move. You can go the, the AP if Galio. If he starts to get into the team, he does amplify the magic damage pretty heavily of the volley bear of the Lux and a little bit on the Tristana. So it could be decent. And also, Trundle does some magic damage with the ultimate, so it does increase the damage of all of those team-wide abilities. But I personally agree with you. I think there are better items here. As guess whose best friend is back again? It's good old Olaf. But the fight is going to be coming here on the top side. But NASA should just be able to clean this up as they've committed a lot here and really given Red Team the fight they want. But they still can't chase it down. Just really, they really no CC. But that's going to be the double stun here coming through from the Morgana. Able to take him out, but the Morgana gets taken down by the Galio. Oh wait, no, no, Getting no, that's excited. Not wait, yes it is. Okay, so we have. Oh, I've gotten all kinds of confused. Morgana is the enemy support for Galio, so but there. yeah, Jinx getting excited is huge there. Maybe and, No um, Name goes for a steal. That's like kind of their. I think that's the play. Yeah, and, and giving over that last Soul Drake is looking really bad now because you could have taken that, but instead you chose Baron and you were not able to crack the enemy inhibitor line at all. And now it's a 2k gold game. It's so eerily similar of last game. And one thing I'd like to say here is I do not think they need this. Oh my gosh, it goes to the Jinx and they're able to pick up a free kill there. Decent death timers will hurt this team. Go to Baron, go shove bot lane. They need to, this is where they need to be decisive and make a decision other than resetting. Like, yeah, I, I, I would go as far to say that this game is, is pretty much over. Um, now, I'm going to who? For, for, my side? for the blue side. I'm going to Wait, no, who's winning here? here? If blue side's winning? No, red side, the game should be, red side should take the game now. Theoretically. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, like, I have not seen enough from red side like, to show me that they will in any way play this yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying that, like, <laughs> if both teams do what they're supposed to do, Okay, well, I get well, a kill with this guy? You're making a very big assumption uh, there as the cooldown comes in. The caster curse. And the Olaf does exactly what he's supposed to do in 35 minutes, and it gives himself up as a sacrificial lamb melee minion for the enemy AD carry. There's a Galio main in chat who says, Abyssal is, is sus. The Galio main. I just don't like Abyssal. I think fully oh on Galio is the way to go. Huge, but going to be able to get away is that the Jinx is okay. blocked. But they are fighting around this Baron. They're going to be taking plenty of chunks Jinx over the wall. Just be the sitting in there. Oh my yeah, God! Jinx okay, I thought she was going to steal that. But she's just going to smite and she helps them burst it. But Nasus is in this fight now. As the Volley ult comes down, he's going to get killed pretty quickly. But the Galio ult is going to be huge here in zoning, and that's three quick kills as the Nasus is dead. The Jinx is dead. 
And this Trundle is running rampant, and that's Baron and Ace for the side of Blue Team, who could possibly look to end the game right here with these long death timers. Could look to just cripple the side of Red Team. And yeah, I like the Thornmail coming out from the Galio. Really helped him play that front line really, really effectively. But uh, yeah, we are, we are now pushing onto the inhibitor line. TP coming in from the Galio as the caster curse is in full, full effect. <laughs> As Blue Team is looking to just shove down this mid lane. Can they win the game? Go, go for it. Still 20 seconds on the most of the The Galio the will wait on the commitment. And there, go in. Trundle auto attack the turrets. Do help what you help your boy. He's trying his best. Hit. Your homie is hurting. Help the homie. But the Olaf's just getting beaten up as this Trundle is healing for so much hell. He's tanking so much but he is going to go down here as the jinx is able to get the kill in the nasus popped ghost he could be looking to turn this fight all the way back around and we could see an exact reverse as the shutdown comes in for the nasus looking to chase down onto this galia with the new ghost having Dude. that extra he will not be able to and it looks like it will be a two kills for them but their base is getting opened up and as you said we could possibly see a back door here do my eyes deceive me, or does Nasus have Grievous Wounds? 38 minutes into the game, finally purchasing the item to allow him to split push against the Trundle. But, Torius Bud, his eyes widen, his table slowly rising up as he sees the potential for another back door play. Yeah. He's half mass and... right now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, uh, let's not, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> um... He's going, he, he sees it. His eyes widen. His pupils dilated. He knows this and the is going to get dumped on here. This could just be the game, but the Tristana takes her down, and that's the main team fight damage gone. You cannot be that far up. Nasus check, they say. Nasus is at 900 stacks. Jesus. Yeah, just 900, guys. He has grievous 900 stacks. You know, really, I think. I mean, if you don't, if you aren't sitting on 1,400 at this point, are you even playing Nasus, man? This must be the no monitor challenge or something coming out here from Let Me Stack 10 Men. Well, that sounds weird. Let Me Stack 10 Minutes. <laughs> Let Me Stack 10 Men is a little bit of a different name there. Well, looks like they're going to try to push onto the Nexus here with these barren up super minions. The Nasus is trying its best to hold, trying to keep him off the turret, but the Grievous Wounds are killing him so quickly, the board going to burn him down. And it's too late. The double kill coming through. The triple kill for the Tristana. Trying to make it a quadra here. Going to give that one over. Autoing all sorts of minions. And it will be cheap. And a 2-0 in the series. And for gentlemen. Sensei, for Sensei yeah. Randall. Intermediate. No, the there you go. It's people joined and it's confusing me. Sensei and Randall's intermediate quadi scratch and taking the duo. And taking it 2-0 here as like three people popped in and really threw off my vibe there. For Ladies. A lie, but a really good game coming from both teams. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We are jumping into another series. Seamless transition here. Good eyes. From what I was told. Like like fire, like fire firing a bullet into a moving train or some shit. Absolutely. It's going to it's like it's we're going to be jumping from a horse onto a moving train there we go. while shooting a gun. Happy Cloud, Apollo, you guys did a fantastic job. Way too large also, the Puppet Master in the Shadows doing a fantastic job. What we're about to do right now is to transition into an executive game. It is Globo Jim Purple Cobras Good versus luck, the Pace Tasters. We're going to be right back. Uh, yes, we're going to be right back. So stick around.